How's it going, Gray Boys? It's time for the bowl season, uh, and we have to set up our eight-team playoff. And the more that I have been thinking about it, the more I think we might have snuck in. If we were to not do the playoffs, we would be playing against number six Nebraska in the Fiesta Bowl. But thanks to the college football revamp team and the utility tool that they created, we'll be able to set up our playoffs. I have no idea what the result of this is going to be, so let's just go into it. And this is why I think we'll be in. By default, bids are given to the following. The ACC champs, the Big Ten champs, the Big 12 champs, Pac-12 champs, SEC champs, and the highest ranked G5 team. And then two at-large bids, which I don't think we could get an at-large bid. But I don't know what G5 team would be ranked higher than us. So we will likely be the eighth seed going up against, I think it's USC at the number one spot. Uh, but I mean, let's not delay. Let's jump in and see what the matchups are. And we'll go ahead and let the file load in. Again, if you're going to do this for yourself, uh, make sure that you make a backup of your, uh, your dynasty file because things could potentially go wrong. And the last thing you want is for your dynasty to get corrupted. And oh my gosh, we're in. Not only that, but we aren't even the eight seed. We are the seven seed in the Sugar Bowl playing Michigan below us in the bracket if we were to make it into the semifinal is Georgia and Georgia Tech in the Cotton Bowl that is an incredible matchup as well on the left side of the bracket we've got USC and Oklahoma State in the Rose Bowl and in the Orange Bowl it's Cal and the Teal Boys now I don't think that this will happen there is still a chance though but how insane would it be if by some miracle we get through to the championship game and play the Teal Boys in our first year away from that team. This is absolutely absurd. I had no idea that this was going to happen. And the fact that we're not even the lowest seed really shows something. I think that uh, our, our coaching staff at Eastern uh, gets a lot of respect from that playoff committee. This is the rest of the bowl matchups. Uh, there's a few placeholders, so teams that potentially could have a bowl that I don't think will. Uh, so West Virginia looks like they're kind of getting screwed over there. And I think maybe we might uh, move them. Number 24 team getting put into a placeholder doesn't really seem fair to them. So instead we will make a, a more interesting matchup. We're going to replace them uh, with North Texas in the Red Box Bowl. So we can edit the matchup. And then we go down to West Virginia. And then that switches their places. Sorry to North Texas. Uh, but, I mean, a ranked West Virginia bowl eligible, it seems weird that they just wouldn't get a bowl game. So, let's go ahead and just save that up. And now we can load back into our dynasty. And there it is. The matchup against the number two team in the country, Eastern Michigan versus Michigan. I didn't even realize how big of a game this would be when it first popped up. Uh, an in-state matchup in the quarterfinals of the playoffs for us, and then down on the other side of our bracket, in-state for Georgia and Georgia Tech. This is an insane playoff so far. So many storylines that can be written about this. We are favored to win this game. <laughs> Michigan 12-1, and one, A overall. They are better everywhere except for the turnover differential, total defense and rush defense, and in total defense and rush defense, they're number two in the country, so we're barely beating them there. We have no reason to think that this is going to go well for us. Let's see. Who did they lose to? A number 19, 8, and 4, Minnesota. Uh, they've got decent wins. They're out of conference. Not too great. They beat a 3-9 and nine Arkansas. Uh, they did it pretty handily, though. And then good win against Penn State. And then obviously beating Nebraska in the uh, Big Ten championship game. So that's pretty solid for them. We would just get straight into this, but we do need to take a look before that uh, at all Americans and award winners for the season. We haven't looked at them yet. I'm curious if we've made the list, and I guess now to see where Michigan has. Uh, they've got a left tackle on the first team all NCAA. They've got a right guard, so that offensive line looking pretty solid. But we've got Chris Banks, the defensive tackle, first team all American, as well as Eric Lane. So our defense versus their offense is what it seems like. Second team, all Americans. They've got a right tackle, so another lineman for them. Uh, and we have another uh, defensive player uh, with Leon Walters in the corner. They also have 
uh, a corner as well there. How about this freshman team quarterback? There's an old Dominion QB, so that's kind of interesting. Not something that you would expect to see, and I don't think that we're going to have a whole lot. They do. Right guard and a right tackle, so they must have the best uh, offensive line in the country. Throw a left tackle there as well. That is terrifying for us, a defensive tackle. We are going up against some scary stuff. Our kicker, Kyle Harris, though, is the, uh, the freshman All-American kicker. Well, just because I am really curious how badly we're going to get beat. The all Big Ten first team. I see. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven players from Michigan. Terrifying. And in the all Mac, there's a little bit of us. Uh, Serge Mitchell, Zach Wilson make it for the offense. A couple other guys, Terry Curtis, Andrew Breedlove. Uh, Chris Banks is up there, Justin Dawson, Eric Lane. It's going to be a lot of our defense, I think. It is all Mac, but just a lot. Wade Benjamin makes it, Leon Walters makes it, Mike Briggs. And the thing is, uh, as excited as I am that this is my team, this was none of my doing. Uh, our defensive coordinator and the head coach completely controlled the defense, so uh, I can't take credit for that. All right, how about some award winners? Do we have anything crazy? Um, David West, the quarterback for Coastal, third place in the Maxwell. Doesn't quite win it, but uh, neither do we. Walter Camp, not us. Bednarik, no. Nagurski, no. The O'Brien, I don't know if we're going to have any of these. Chad Bradshaw does win the Bolitnikov in his redshirt senior season, so good for him. Michigan almost has a, a tight end win the Mackey. They do win the Outland. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, Eastern Michigan here, which is a little bit scary. So yeah, that's pretty rough. We know that they are definitely the better team. Uh, who knows what we can do? Man, us making the playoffs means that it's going to be that much longer <laughs> until we can see the gray field, unless we just lose this game. Shaky bar on offense for Michigan. They've got a 95 overall with a 99 offense and a 93 defense. <laughs> this is uh, this is a shame. I'm a little bit worried that uh, people who are against the eight-team playoff or having a G5 school in the playoff could use a game like this uh, against us because we're most likely going to get beat down pretty hard here. I like this uh, not fully away look. We got to get the green on national television there. So we're wearing the green helmets. Uh, and for Michigan, well, it's Michigan. So I don't see why we should have them wear anything else. The maze, the all navy would be interesting. But we're just going to go with the classic Wolverine look. Well, let's hope for the best here. I still don't believe that an 11-2 and two MAC team would make it into the playoff. But by the rules of the selection... Uh, we made it in. Uh, defensively, again, we look like we're the best in the country, but the, the three uh, categories that we lead the nation in, Michigan is second in with a much more difficult schedule, and offensively, uh, they are very, very good. Um, they're top players for next year, 91, 90, 90. For us, our top players for next year, 78, 78, 76, but... Those guys are on hot streaks. How about injuries? We still have Jackson out with that partially torn MCL. Michigan comes into this game completely healthy. Alrighty. Well, here we are in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. A little bit different than playing at Ryan Nearson, I would say. A lot of pressure on this team. Definitely the biggest game of almost every single one of these players' careers. We do win the toss, and we're going to let the defense get out there first. So we will just kick this one away, and I don't expect it to be a touchback, so we will likely see a return. Ball fielded at the one, and Michigan gets this Sugar Bowl underway with a decent return out past the 30. All righty, defense. Can you get a quick stop? Or will we have to jump in? Eight-yard pass on first down. We're going to have to jump in because I assume that Michigan is going to do our defense dirty. Again, statistically one of the best defenses in the country, but playing against a 99 overall offense. And also that those stats come against MAC opponents. Walter Mann, the running back for Michigan, gets eight yards on his first carry. Now they go toss play, and we get him in the backfield. A loss of four. That is a huge play by Wade Benjamin. 
Wade Benjamin, again, I think last year was the team's leading tackler, and this year he was an All-American, no? So absolutely fantastic play action for Michigan. Finds a man, Steve Bowling, just before going out of bounds for the first down. John James now two of two on the day as they move across midfield. In this hurry up, tight end in motion. Michigan definitely wants to score on this opening drive. They need a touchdown. Got to set the tone. They don't want us underdogs coming in thinking that we have a chance. That's for sure. And we've already seen that, that uh, our defense can get stops. But will they be able to get enough uh, in a row? Quarterback's taken off scrambling. Plenty of space. Going to break the tackle and... Oh my gosh, he's off to the races. Blockers all over the place, and he's down to the 11-yard line. And that's what I mean. Got to wrap up the tackles, and when we do stop them on a play, how are we going to continue to stop them for the rest of this set of downs? First and 10 now from the 11 for Michigan. Wolverines looking to score early. It's just going to be a handoff. And man, I think that is. No, Dwayne Summers only gets two yards, but gets inside the 10. Brings up a second and eight for the Wolverines. They can still pick up a first down, so they don't need to get into the end zone, but uh, they're going to be wanting to get in as quick as possible. Two minutes already off the clock in this game as they hand it off up the middle, and Dwayne Summers only gets a yard, so a chance for the defense now is it's third and six. Not only does the defense have to play spectacularly, but the offense is going to have to do work as well as... They'll look to pass on this third and six, looking for the end zone over the middle. They're wide open in the end zone. The coverage seemed like there was there for a bit, but Chris Hyde just got free. Michigan scores. They miss the extra point. No, they get the extra point. Just didn't give it to him on the scoreboard. So what can we do? Our first drive in the Sugar Bowl here, trying to make sure that we keep it respectable i don't expect to win this game but anything we can do to make our stock look a little bit better for next year is great and we find zach wilson immediately for nine yards a little check down there i know that we're going to have to be passing because this defense is incredible safety comes up to bring pressure and i gotta take the risk here we know that they're gonna come in i don't know if we can find jesse wagner quickly but we can't just lob one up and have Nixon come down with it through the contact and he's not down yet. Nixon showing up in the big game with the 19-yard reception. Just try to show Michigan that they can't bring that pressure because we can make them pay and it works out that time. Now we can hand the ball off to Wagner. Cut it back inside just trying to get those positive yards and he gets four on his first carry of the game. This is going to be really, really tough, especially for Ed Bird. As I'm going to be asking a lot of him throwing the football. We'll hand it off up the middle on second down. Wagner just gets back to the line of scrimmage there. That'll bring up our first third down of the game. Third and six. I'm looking at John Wilson as my first look. And then probably to Broussard after that. Waiting. Maybe Zach Wilson. He comes down with it with space. And the tight end Zach Wilson's going to score. 43 yards to the house. And we have tied this game up. Ed Bird, 3-3 three three for 71 yards on the drive. And that was an absolute dot. Just a misread by the Michigan defense. And just like that, it's all tied up. Well, that is assuming we get this extra point. Extra point is good, and it's up to the defense now. They take the touchback on the kickoff. Four-yard rush on second or on first down. Two yards on second down. And that brings us with uh, third and four here. A chance for the defense to get the first stop of the game. If neither defense is up to it, we could just see a high scoring one. This is gonna take a big broken tackle, but Walter Mann can't do it. It's fourth and three, and they hold. So the Wolverines are forced to punt it away. And with a minute left in the first quarter, we get a takeover with a chance potentially to take the lead if this drive goes well. We'll give it to Wagner up the middle. Get him to pick up four yards on first down. And on second down, I'm looking at the counter. I'm not super confident about this one, but I got to trust the offensive line here. And Wagner again just gets back to the line of scrimmage. So it's another third and six. We're not always going to get big plays. But we can still hope for the best. Broussard and Mitchell on the left are my two main targets. What can we do? Search Mitchell is open. He's got enough for the first down there. Good catch. Good throw from Ed Bird, and we move the sticks. See if we can get one more playoff here before the end. 
of the quarter. It's the exact same look. And it works out well for us. We go to John Wilson this time for 14 yards. And boy, are we in a great spot here at the end of the first quarter. Tied up with the Wolverines, the number two team in the country. Coming in as the number seven seed in this playoff. We've got it tied up and they're on the ropes now. So what can we do to continue to bring this pressure? I would take a field goal, but we have to get into range first. So it's going to be a handoff to Wagner, and he's going to lose three yards. Just can't find the space. Michigan's defense shuts that down. These are the spots in this game where I'm a little bit worried that my decision-making could hurt us. I like the, the way the defense is adjusted here, though, is we're going to run it on second and 13. And Wagner just runs right into a defensive lineman. That hurt. That was a lot of space there. Well, so far, we're 2-2 two two on third downs, but it's not looking great, i got to be honest on this one uh we'll see what we can do throwing it this is a terrible throw mitchell comes down with it and breaks a tackle well short of the line to gain he only gets a yard at the end of that one curious to see what coach thinks he doesn't want us to go for it so it'll just be thrown away wait a second he jones was the one that threw it away coach went for it on fourth down with a fake punt pass and it was incomplete so I got to be honest, I don't think faking the punt with our punchers bad throwing would have been the right play. Uh, but coach goes for it anyways. Defense, Wade Benjamin again getting in their second tackle for loss of the half. Walter Mann has been held to four yards on five carries. Second and 13, empty backfield for this quarterback as he steps back, throws it over the middle, and that one was almost picked off. But he finds Josh Warren, makes it a manageable third and four. They'll come back into the hurry up from the 48, looking to get across midfield, move the sticks, and again, just throwing it over the middle, that short, high percentage route that works for the first down. Man, the crowd is very buggy today. Full stadium plus big plays equals audio lag, apparently. John James keeps it on that one. Quarterback blast. And they pick up six yards on that first down play. I think I read that as 11 runs and five passes. This is pass number six. It's deflected away. Fortunately for them, it just hits the turf. And Michigan has an injury. I don't know who number 21 is. Probably a running back or something. Bruised ribs out for a little bit. Third and four here. Another big play for the defense. They're throwing the screen. And that is perfect timing. Chris High gets the catch. But there's nowhere for him to go. So they're forced to punt it away, and now with 3.28 left in the half, we take over on offense. If we can turn this into a long drive, you never know. Wagner, good vision, finds five yards on that first down carry. And we'll continue to look to the running back on this one, second and five, finding the counter. He's got some space, and it's almost enough for the first down, third and inches with the clock moving. This is where we'll see what our offensive line is made of. Remember, the offense is only like 70-something overall against Michigan's 93 defense or whatever. something Somewhere around there. Obviously didn't work that time. Big stop from the Wolverines. We'll have to punt it away. Decent punt, at least, for us. We get them back inside the 25, and with two and a half minutes on all three timeouts, the Wolverines are going to look to score before the half. We do get the ball to start the third quarter, so they definitely want to be in the lead going into the locker rooms. Quarterback scrambles. I don't know if that was a designed run or not, but only got a yard, and the clock continues to tick down here. Looks like he's going to scramble again, and he's dropped at the line of scrimmage. Third and nine, and our coach is taking our first time out. There's two minutes left on the clock. If we could get the stop here, it would be big. That one incomplete. I don't know if that was just a poor throw or good defense, but it's fourth and nine. So Michigan has punted it away, and from the 35, maybe the 36-yard line will take over. Two timeouts trying to take the lead before halftime. Terrible throw here, but Ernest Bennett comes down with it. The stiff arm cheese continues to roll downfield. That's 22 yards as we got to get in the hurry up. And I'm just going to come up and quickly uh, spike the ball here. Don't want to burn off any time, and I didn't like the formation we were in. To this point, Ed Bird, a perfect 7-7 seven seven through the air, so he's showing up when it matters. What can the rest of the team do? I really like Broussard here. Or we throw the risky one. Oh, sailed it over the head of Wilson there. First in completion. 
Really should have knocked on wood after uh, calling out Ed's performance on the last one. I like Wagner here. I like Wagner a lot, but I also like Mitchell and I don't like my user. Oh, that was just rough all around. Fourth and 10. Here's what coach does here. And just because we can't trust, he's not going to fake this. We're going to hop in and watch this punt. I threw away that drive. Poor decision making on the route. Hopefully we get a good punt off. They're taking the fair catch. No good bounce. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. And Michigan will have a minute and a half and all three timeouts to work with on this drive. I'm certainly a little bit disappointed. Ed Bird started 7-7. Seven seven. Second I mention it, the next two passes were incomplete. Can't have that. Quarterback feeling the pressure. Has to throw the check down. Man got tackled inbounds after only a gain of four. So they had to take their first timeout. I think this quarterback also seven of nine. So identical uh, completion percentages for opposing quarterbacks. Pressure coming. The blitz is almost there for the interception. This one could go all the way. Oh my gosh. Inside the 15. It's Wade Benjamin of all people with the interception. Put that right next to his two tackles for loss. And we already have an early candidate for most valuable player of this game. Certainly he'd get the game ball if it ended right now. Giving the ball to Jesse Wagner and with a minute and 16, we're going to run the ball, probably burn the clock, and if we don't score, we'll kick a field goal. The momentum swings are all over the place, and I got to imagine all of the Michigan fans around the country, but especially uh, in, in Michigan itself, are freaking out right now because Eastern Michigan is just bringing it. <laughs> Going with the conservative tempo to try and burn some clock here as we get the first and goal. And we're looking at a read option. Jerome Simmons comes in. 23 seconds. I got to hand it off to him. Can't risk Ed Bird getting hit there. He loses a yard. And with 19 seconds, I've taken our second timeout. I think that works well. And we can just continue to try to run this in. I'm not going to risk a pass. And I want the clock to burn as much as possible. Wagner cuts it back and he's into the end zone. Four yard touchdown run puts us in the lead. Pending the extra point, 14 to seven with 17 seconds left before the half. The extra point is good. And Michigan has to return that ball. So no touchback for them on the kickoff. They've got seven seconds. And 75 yards to go to try and tie this one up. They're going to run it up the middle. We'll see a timeout here and then probably a Hail Mary. Hope coach has put us into the prevent. The last thing we need is a big momentum shifting play at the end of the half here. Pressure not getting to the quarterback all the time in the world. He heaves it deep. There's a man open. He catches it, but he gets tackled. Just barely tripped up. That might have been Wade Benjamin for all I know. Michigan so close to the Hail Mary at the end of the half, but it won't hold. So we go into the locker rooms up 14-7. And boy, are the Wolverines on upset alert. We didn't expect to be in the playoffs at all, let alone to be competing, let alone to be in the lead with one half to play. Could we make it into the semifinal round? Who knows? Up to the offense to continue to produce. Can't cre have any turnovers. And Ed Bird just has to continue to throw the ball really, really well. So we try to return the kick. Just getting to the 14-yard line, though. A long ways to go for the offense to get down to that Eagles end zone. We're going to start it with a run to... Je oh, my gosh. Wagner's the man. Jesse Wagner, 12 yards on first down. Both teams with just six first downs. That was Wagner's 12th carry. I think he has 40-something yards. We'll give him another attempt here as he cuts it back inside again and just trying to get positive yards on every play, even if it's only three. Michigan probably needs to bring the heat here. We're going play action. It looks like they could be bringing a blitz, and they are, so we got to get rid of this one quick. We see the check down. Smith has it. He's too slow to do anything. That's the fullback, and man, that's a shame. With the blocking that was available there, if Smith was any faster, really any other player on the offense, that could have been a huge gain to at least midfield. Instead, we got to try up the middle on third and inches, and Wagner gets it. Can, oh my gosh, six yards. I am just at a loss for words. This team is playing incredible, and so far, not only have we outgained Michigan, 
but we've held them to 166 yards of total offense. We'll try the triple option here. Got to get the pitch out. Chris Broussard breaks a tackle, and Chris Broussard is off to the races. The 20, the 15, across the 10, and he gets tackled out of bounds at the six-yard line. Over 100 rushing yards now on the day for the team, and a huge broken tackle sets us up to make this a two-score game. Chris Broussard on that triple option has been absolutely lethal in the past few games. As we'll go to Wagner. He's going to get a couple of yards up the middle. Second and goal now. And all we're going to do is just try to run it up the middle here. We need points on every drive, but we don't need a touchdown, especially with the lead. So we give it to Wagner up the middle. And Jesse fights his way forward for two more yards, which means two more. And he's into the end zone. Three of six on our third down conversions. And I think once again, it's time to channel the inner Drewski here. We'll give it to Courtney Smith again and go with the fullback dive. And he's met at the line. Oh, this is tough. I'm going to let coach make the decision. And coach wants to go for it. Oh, I'm really thinking about kicking the field goal, but they're not really stacking the box here. So Courtney Smith... Two yards to Pater. We hand it off. He's got the space, and he's into the end zone. It's a two-touchdown lead now for the Eagles over the Wolverines here. If the defense can get another stop, I'm a little bit worried. Michigan won't have the time. Extra point is good, and the kick is returned almost to the 30. They get five yards on first down, two yards on second down, and that brings up a third and three. What can we do to slow these guys down? They will look to the air, throw the screen out towards the edge. Plenty of space to get the first down. But honestly, that was closer than I think they would have liked. You got to wonder when stamina will start to play a, a big deal in this game. And when the superior talent of Michigan could show up, that's a great first down carry to Walter Mann. He gets eight yards. They're near midfield. And I got to say, it's probably wise of Michigan to stay in this hurry up for the rest of the game. Two minutes left in the third quarter. They hand it off up the middle, and that's another good carry. But again, if you're the Wolverines, late in the third quarter, you're held to seven points and having to throw the ball away on a screen? It's not looking good. What can they do here? Second and ten. Kind of expecting the pass. They will step back. Plenty of time, but the quarterback decides to scramble. He's got a lot of space, and it's Wade Benjamin getting the tackle. But he's going to pick up the first down in the process. Really just trying to hold them now to a field goal. They're going with the option. Quarterback decides to keep it. Picks up six yards again. Michigan's offense is definitely on a roll right now. They're approaching their red zone. That last play brought them across the 30. It'll be second and four with a minute and 10 left in the third quarter. Tight end goes in motion. They'll hand it off up the middle. There's plenty of space. And again, a first down as they now get into the red zone with that nine yard pickup. There is still plenty of time for the Wolverines to win this game, or at least tie it up. They pass it short over the middle, but even that one is completed for nine down inside the 10. The defense has held strong for so long in this game. Is it enough or have they fallen a little bit too early? This one thrown short of the uh, goal line. Dennis Johnson tried to get there. He gets the first and goal. And now from the three, not only is the defense getting tired as the game goes on, but as this drive goes on and they stay in the hurry up, we're in trouble. The read option, John James keeps it. He's into the end zone, the three yard rushing touchdown, and it's back to a seven point game as they get the extra point. And now with 31 seconds left in the third quarter, I'm not sure it's quite a time to, to burn the clock. We definitely would like to score again. Michigan just showed there that they can score very quick. And Wagner with some great blocking. I should have kept it north. I think that would have been a first down. Did a lot of running on the last drive. I'd like to pass here. Looking at the quick slants. Second and four. Nobody open. Just had to get rid of it. Lucky that we're able to get the incompletion there. I hope that this isn't a terrible decision. The final play of the third quarter. I'm going halfback slip screen. I know it's risky. But I think it's just enough of a wrinkle. Can we get the blocking? Wagner has the first down and more. And the drive will stay alive as this third quarter has come to an end. So into the fourth we go, up a touchdown. And boy, do we win the, the big plays so far. 
Just got to hold on for six more minutes of game time. And we could be moving on to the semifinals of the college football playoff. Clutch skill now activated for Michigan, which just puts one more thing in their favor. Nine first downs for us to their 11 on the game. Give it to Wagner, and he's going to just get a yard on that first down. And I got to wonder at this point, if we can just get a field goal, could that be enough? Serge Mitchell coming in motion as we'll step back to pass. Going to check it down to him. Give our star player the ball there. And he gets six yards, but it does bring up a third and four. Ed Bird, 10 of 13 through the air. We're going to give him his 14th attempt, and hopefully it works. Kind of looking at Broussard on this one. And I'm throwing He's open a bad throw from Ed. But Dan comes down with it. That was big. Almost across midfield on this drive. I'm starting to feel like we have a chance. They're bringing pressure. Can't get rid of the ball in time, which is lucky because that was an awfully risky throw. And Ed Bird shaking up on that play. That could be absolutely disastrous. McLean comes in and we know he's, I think, 20 overall lower than Ed Bird. Second and 10, though. I'm going to throw him right into the fire. Have him throw his first pass. It's a good throw to Serge Mitchell, who stumbles forwards and gets us into a third and five. It is certainly not over with Ed Bird out. Hopefully, it's just a stinger. We're going to look for the best. Elba Bursitis. So he will be back. That's good news. We're going option. And I got to keep it. No chance to get the pitch off safely there. Fourth and five. I think we'll probably be punting this one away. The re-entry risk is low for Ed Bird. So we're going to sub him back in. Look at that. 21 overall higher. Got to keep that quarterback. And we will just punt the ball away. So it's up to Michigan now. With four minutes left in the fourth quarter to try and go down and tie this game. Number two team in the country. What do they have in it? The clutch skill activated and a big hole on first down as they run it up the middle for nine yards. Walter Mann absolutely increasing his total yardage on the game the past few carries. His first five carries, he had four yards. His next five, I think he's gotten about 36 or so. That's a big play. A stiff form from Walter Mann. He gets the first down and gets shoved out of bounds. Who on the defense is going to step up and make another big play for us, though, is the question. They continue to pass. Quarterback scrambling. A chance to get the sack, but he just made a beautiful cut to get inside and get positive yards. Jones making some good decisions ever since he threw that pick. We'll see. Maybe Wade Benjamin can step up again. This one handed off, and it stopped. A loss of a yard to Walter Mann. Third and seven, and the clock is running, and I feel like Michigan just isn't showing enough sense of urgency as they do get the first down there. And that'll temporarily stop the clock, but it's inside three minutes. John James now 15 of 19 through the air. Cross midfield. He's got his team in a position to score. He keeps it on the read option. He's going to take a big shot there, but he gets seven yards in the process. Definitely worth his troubles as they will get back into that hurry up. 240 on the clock. Looking back to pass. Pressure coming. He's got to scramble. Plenty of space in front of him. And he's got the first down sliding down to the 31-yard line. Really hurts to have to sit here as a passenger and just watch as our hopes in this playoff might be shrinking. We do still have the lead. But Michigan is absolutely rolling in this fourth quarter. Ed Bird only had to come out for two plays, but I got to wonder how crucial were those two plays? Second and four, they step back to throw. Quarterback scrambling again, which can only mean to me that our coverage is really good, but the scrambling is working way too well. And to prove my point, John James is now up to 82 yards rushing, and he's going to add to that total on this one. Again, taking hits. He's got to be careful not to fumble the ball, but he's nearing 100 yards on the day, up to 91 now. Just a little bit slow to get up on that one. They wanted to make their subs, so no hurry up. Inside two minutes. The clock hits to a minute and 45. He's going to scramble again and nowhere to go. He gets sacked for a loss of four. This is a huge third and nine with the clock moving. The Wolverines electing not to use any of their timeouts. Going to save them for when we get the ball, most likely. So can they convert? We're bringing the pressure. That one swatted away. A bad throw. It's fourth and nine. They might have to go for this. It is the offense taking the field. Fourth and nine with a minute and 26 
left on the clock. Can the defense hold? And can we see a miracle thrown short of the line again? He's fighting and he got the first down and into the end zone. Steve Porter putting the team on his back on that one and pending the extra point. We are all tied up with a minute and 20 left in the game as John James breaks the uh, school passing touchdown record for the season. He gets his 30th of the year. Will they get the extra point? You never know. We could see him miss it. It's up. And it's through, tied up with a minute and 20. This is a big game. It'll be up to the offense now to get it done. And we're going to look deep on uh, on first down here. If we can get enough time, I'm just sending two guys here and we'll see. Can one of them break free? No, throw the ball away. No intentional grounding outside the pocket. Had to take a look. I'm almost tempted, honestly, just to run the clock out and try to go to overtime because if the offense makes a mistake here, if I throw an interception, that could be it. I have to throw this one, though. John Wilson gets the catch and gets out of bounds 20 yards downfield. A minute and three now left on the clock. Going to continue to pass. Waiting over the middle. We find Nixon and Johnny holds on to that one, but the clock will be moving. This is a risky decision. We're going to try the read option, though, with the clock moving. Bird keeps it. He's got a block, and he gets the first down to stop the clock. Puts us over 2,000 yards rushing on the season. And again in the hurry up with now 43 seconds. We'll try to get this one off quickly. Looking for Broussard. He's open. He's going to hold on to it. We might be in field goal range with 38 seconds left. Got to hope for the best here. And now that we're in field goal range, I'm not going to try to risk throwing the ball. Just give it to Wagner and let him run. Force Michigan maybe to take a timeout if they're willing to try to get the stop. They're showing no signs of wanting to stop us. I know we're at a risky spot. We probably need a couple more yards, so I will snap this one. Try to center it up and let Jerome Simmons just get back to the line of scrimmage. We'll take our first time out there. I do worry a little bit from here. It's about a 47-yarder. Our long on the season, 45. Just got to hope that the freshman kicker has it in him to find that couple extra yards, and that'll help tremendously as Simmons picks it up. We'll take our second time out there. Uh, we're going to get iced on this one almost certainly. No, Michigan a little bit broken, not willing to call the timeout. Can we get this one in? Game is on the line. Hold was good, kick was good, and we dogged it off the oh, off the crossbar. Two inches higher, and we're winning this game instead. It'll be Michigan with a Hail Mary attempt. That could not have been any closer. So, so close to just bouncing over. What a miracle that would have been. So we end up a yard short of where we needed to be. And it's Michigan now with one final look before we potentially head to overtime here. Clock expires on the play. Plenty of time to throw it up. Michigan. It's intercepted. Oh, my gosh. I thought somebody got it. It's pool, I think, or something. We're going to overtime. Completely at a loss for words on this game. Somehow fighting. And we got to continue to fight. Tails never fails. And we will uh, put the defense out there first. I just hope that these guys aren't too gassed because I don't feel super confident that our offense will be consistent enough to win this in overtime. 21 all. And we are now underway. Looks like the screen. That one should be stopped for a loss. Broken tackle the first time. There's a flag down, though. This could be big if it's a holding. Even bigger if it's a clipping. That's going to send him back a long ways. First and 25. If you're the Wolverines now, you're almost panicking. First and 25 from the 40. And you have to be able to score. Quarterback sheds a sack, sheds a second one, but he can't shed the third and second and 32. The defense is alive and well here in overtime. Michigan is at almost midfield here with just a couple of plays to get a first down. And if the defense keeps swarming, they could be in trouble. They go with another slip screen. Plenty of blockers out in front. They're going to get a little bit back, but it's third and 24. 
Could it be that we at least hold them to a field goal and give ourselves a chance to walk it off with a touchdown? 24 yards is a lot to gain. Quarterback, plenty of time. Pressure's coming. He's going to break the sack, throw it on the run, and it is intercepted. But he stepped out of bounds. That would have been absolutely massive. But even bigger, they are out of field goal range. This would be like a 60-yarder. So they're going to have to go for it. And it's caught a diving catch. That should have been a touchdown. But over the middle on the seam route, they find their man and stay alive here in overtime. If that interception was just one foot in bounds, it would be almost certainly game over. Instead, the Wolverines will continue this one to hand off out towards the edge. A little stiff arm cheese, but he's not going to get a whole lot out of it. My heart absolutely racing now as we have almost given up 350 yards of offense. Quarterback back to pass, throws it over the middle. He's got that short curl route. They've got that third and goal at the three-yard line. Now the question for Michigan here is they're actually at about the two. Is do you go for this on fourth if you don't punch it in here? We should be expecting the run. They would be foolish to do anything else. But no, they're going to step back to pass. Quarterback's going to try to scramble, and he's going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage. So we might have held them to the field goal after all. And it is the kick team out on the field. I mean, they have to make this still. It's not even a given that they get the three points. The kick is up. That looked good to me. So 24 to 21, we have a chance to win this in overtime. The first play from scrimmage in overtime for this offense, the triple option to Dan Broussard. He took one 40 some odd yards the first time around. He's gonna get the pitch. Can't make a man miss, but he does get three yards on that first down for us. And all that matters to me is ball security. We held them to a field goal, which means that all we need is a field goal. So I just can't try to do too much as Simmons comes in, gets a couple more yards, but it's third and four. And I see no reason to do anything other than hand the ball off. Simmons still in. I'm gonna flip this play, have him go to the stronger side there. He's got a gap. It closes, but he just trucks over him. That's a first down in the offense. Can continue to push towards the end zone. And now Robinson will come in. And we're down to our third string running back. Fatigue really setting in for this team as that is a huge run for Pat Robinson. Eight yards on his first carry. Second and two from the six yard line. We're going play action. They're bringing pressure. Just got to get it away. Right bumpers open and Dan Broussard wins the game in overtime. Wide open in the end zone. 27 to 24 in the first round of the playoffs. And we have come in and upset the Michigan Wolverines. The two seed loses to the seven seed. And my goodness, was that completely unexpected? I don't even think we belonged in the playoff to begin with, but we get our spot and we make it worth it. Play of the game, the throw to Zach Wilson, he takes it to the house. But for me, the player of the game, well, that's gotta go to the defense, right? Well, they give it to Ed Bird. He did a, a very good job, especially from what we've seen from him. And uh, well, we've won the Sugar Bowl, but it's not over. We, uh, we got to move our sights down to some team from the state of Georgia and hope for the best. An absolutely shocking game. The state of Michigan is in shambles as the Eagles have soared above the Wolverines 27 to 24. My goodness, I just can't get over it. And the fact that we were a yard short on a field goal to win the game in regulation uh, just speaks to the fact that we maybe did deserve to win that game. We played fantastic. We win the turnover battle. Uh, one of those turnovers doesn't really count to me because it was just a Hail Mary. Uh, but that one from Wade Benjamin, absolutely fantastic. And I think he's my player of the game, although the game doesn't recognize that. Uh, we, out, or we were outgained everywhere. They had one more rushing yard than us. They had 14 more passing yards, but we had the time of possession and those two turnovers. And that's enough at the end of the day. Ed Bird goes 15 to 20 for 194 yards and two touchdowns. And crucially, no interceptions. And they give Justin Dawson the defensive stats for three tackles for loss and two sacks. But again, Wade Benjamin had two tackles for loss and an interception. And I think I value that 
just a little bit more, but my goodness, what a game from the team all around. So somehow against all odds, we have won the Sugar Bowl and uh, we will be on to the next round of the playoffs. But unfortunately for you guys, that's going to have to wait until next episode. At the start of the next episode, we will sim through the other three quarterfinal matchups and we will find out uh, who we're playing in the second round of the playoffs between Georgia and Georgia Tech. So you'll have to hope that maybe we can pull off another insane instant classic on what is turning out to be an absolute dream season for the Eagles. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this one, please feel free to hit the like button. Do it for Ed Bird. Do it for Wade Benjamin. Do it for Dan Broussard. Heck, do it for the whole team. After you've done that, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And then head down to the comments where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.